All right, hey everybody. So this time we got, got an interview with Joe Marigo. Hope I'm pronouncing the last name part, which you guys know him as uh, Ghost of Young, right? And I'm gonna be asking him some questions, and yeah, we're gonna have a dope interview here. All right. So let's kick start off with the first question. As an INTJ, what self development techniques or strategies have you found most effective for your personality type? I always set one super ambitious yearly goal. <clears throat> Um, and then some short-term achievable goals. Like I really like to exercise the willpower. So I, I said this on Dear Kristen's last interview. I said, uh, I gave up alcohol and I gave up porn for the whole year. And that's hard to do. I mean, especially alcohol and porn as a male. I mean, we're just, our culture just promotes both those things. So I think like once you understand, like you can do these long-term <laughs> goals, you start to unlock like, power in yourself and it's it's part of this like power process that i think intjs need to unlock which is um get some short-term wins and then constantly add something to them or take something away from yourself so i think asceticism as an intj we're, we're super good at that because we have the willpower to deny ourselves earthly pleasures but we unlock something in ourselves which is just like we know that we are elite in our ability to refrain um which gives us it unlocks something i haven't um, i haven't been able to figure out what that is but it, it gives us confidence it gives us internal power so i think um in terms of techniques I, I don't know if i can name like here's a strategy but find something that you can go for a whole year and and use your te to like set how i'm going to do it and then also within that year set some like short-term goals that give you a little win and some some dopamine interesting all right all right all right okay so positive reinforcement basically to obtain your goal i'm an i'm a negative reinforcement <clears throat> to myself <laughs> i like i like thinking of like people like <clears throat> over my shoulder like talking negative to me negatively to me that 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 motivates me Ah, oh, interesting. All right. That's interesting. So, okay. INTJs are known for their strategic thinking. How has your ability to plan and set long-term goals played a role in your self-improvement journey? I think I only set goals where I, can, where I realistically can commit to them. I have, <laughs> there's so many series I've started on YouTube where I'm like, I'm going to finish a 16 types in the workplace. I only get to eight and then I stop. And I, I, I've learned finally to just go, look, do you see you continuing this adventure in three months? And then I, now I just go, no, not even going to do it. Um, so that's helped me not like fail too often where I'm like actually thinking ahead, like, <laughs> will I do this? Can I commit? If so, then, then embark on it. Um, cause there were some setbacks, like in the content creation and the, the MBTI business I was doing for a while. Um, so you said, um, Ability but, to plan set long term goals. Yeah, how has that helped? I have you? to see myself. Yeah, you have to see yourself doing the task daily. Um, like I said, so it's. It, I guess it's a tough question to answer, or um, for me. But um, did I answer it, or maybe you could reframe it in a different way? Different way. Mm, I don't know if you answered it or not, but yeah. Yeah. I, Magic. So, like, but you, you say, something different. Or okay, but, but you did say something interesting, which is you said. Do I see myself doing this for three months? So you sort of pictured the end goal, or the not just the end goal, but the journey all throughout for a specific time period. And you said, "Do you want to put up with this shit? Yes or no?" Basically. Yeah, it's like for alcohol. It's like, well, what if I? What if there's a bachelor party, or what if we go on a cruise? Like, am I gonna be able to do it? Like, can I do it? And I said, yes, I can see myself in all these scenarios. Yes, I can do it. Yes, I can do it. And it's actually not that bad. And I, I hardly think about alcohol anymore. I probably will have a drink, you know, come January 1. But um, the porn one is hard because, you know, it's just so ingrained in our culture. Is like, do am I going to be able to do this? And I've been great the whole year. So if you're just thinking, like, can I do this tomorrow? Well, yeah, you can do it for a day. But you're going to – you will fail if you don't see yourself in every tempting scenario. Well, okay, that's, that's really interesting. So my question is, what motivates you to do it? Is it to prevent the negative consequence of the bad habit? Or is it the positive consequence of what you feel like you, like maybe you feel yourself, oh, if I can do this, then I'll upgrade as a human being. 
I mean, it's both. I think, I think the, the, I think the motivation for, if you're talking about, are you talking about all things or just alcohol or porn? Just that specific example that you brought up, but also we can talk about other examples if you. Well, I think, um, it, it's both. I think for porn, it was actually like the negative consequences is just intimacy with your wife. You, you just lose that. It just happens. Like it's, it's, it's a, it's a real thing. And I can be candid about that for alcohol. It's just, I mean, the positives are I'm never hung over. I can work out in the morning. I don't have any brain fog. I don't have like intestinal problems. Like I can go on and on. Um, INT days when they get drunk turn into like, I mean, real crazy. Like I used to just talk conspiracy theories and people would be like, get away from me. So <laughs> I knew this. I knew I had like this shadow ENTP type that would really come out. And I learned, like, my wife was like, dude, if you ever get drunk again, like, we're going to have to have a conversation. So that's what happened. Oh, nice. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Okay. So what challenges have you faced on your path to self-development and how did you overcome them? So number one is just, like, idle hands, temptation, just being bored. Um, thinking of, like, a bad day at work is stress. Like, you deserve relief you deserve a drink you deserve a glass of wine like that those sort of things get in the way or for dieting it's like you're you're really hungry you've been fasting you can have a coke you can have 50 carbs in a meal like the, it's really just um uh the day-to-day -day life of like living in you know living in a suburb and working in corporate America, all those things play, play into like the stress you and make you want to just have one cheat day. Um, and I don't, and I think it's just, I want to finish for myself so I can say that I've done it. And, uh, if I cheat and no one knows, I know. And that's just as bad as someone else knowing. That's interesting. Cause then I'm weak. Hmm, that's just as bad as somebody else knowing if you know. Yeah, Interesting. yeah, it's just as bad because I know that I'm weak and that I could easily be tempted. Right. So you're not you're not really so okay. How much influence do you think other people have in your self development and shit like that? Oh, zero. Zero. Right. I don't. I mean, no one's. My wife would probably be the only one that's like. You gotta stop drinking, or you gotta stop watching porn. Those, those, those things like definitely like half of that's the family. But like dieting, I was never out of shape or anything. I never, I don't have to eat keto. I, don't, I didn't have to do carnivore for three months. I just tried it to see what I was was capable of handling. Right. Interesting. Okay. So how earlier you were talking about you, you anticipate that you're gonna need to have a drink on January first, right, during a yeah. social gathering. So right. How how susceptible are you in general to peer pressure? <clears throat> so minimal. And I think it's just because of, of my ego. Mm. Like people want to tell, I oh, just have this like live a little, have some fun, something like that's that's good for you. You can do that. That's okay for you. And I think that's like a very aristocratic uh, response. But I, I do believe that it helps me avoid um, peer pressure. Interesting. All right. So many INTJs enjoy learning and acquiring knowledge. Can you share some of your favorite self-help or personal growth books and resources? <clears throat> this was a, I really like this question. There's so many. I mean, Nietzsche's will to power is a, a, just a mindset like if you have to start with the mindset so you start with mindset books to get yourself in the right thinking and then you can fix all the other things like your diet and your sleep and your working out and your job and all that stuff so will to power um is is, is a must-have <sighs> tony robbins wrote one called unlimited power which is a pretty good one <laughs> um I have, I think another one would be people don't like Grant Cardone, but I read 10 X and I read, um, be obsessed or be average. That's like the, the, the sticky note I have on the bottom of my computer is be obsessed or be average. And that's just the mindset you have to have in anything. So I start there and then I read a bunch of 
diet books, keto books, carnivore books, got my diet in check, which affects your gut and your brain, which is if you're not at full capacity all the time, you're going to be operating at 70% thinking you're at 100%. Um, and you will never know, you'll, you'll think it's something else, but 99% of the time it's your diet. Um, and then um, any, I don't think there's a book here, but I think everyone needs to get on either like a, I do a lot of orange theory. Some people do CrossFit, get yourself into like an exercise program. All right. That's interesting. Um, what, what, okay. So what do you think about when it comes to books? How important is the application process as opposed to just reading the book in the cells? I would say I 90% should be applicable and 10% should just be for fun. Right. Not even going to go with 80, 20 rule. I'm going to go 90, 10. I read sales books so that I get better at communicating with people, not because I want to sell, but just, you know, how to write a better email, that sort of stuff. I read Nietzsche because I need to develop a internal philosophy that makes me like, that gives me uh, motivation and, and internal power. But I'll read. I read uh, what's his name, Neil Neil Sagan, Sagan Carl Sagan, just because I wanted to learn about planets. I had no application there. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, that's interesting. Okay, INTJs tend to be independent thinkers. How do you balance your individualistic nature with seeking advice and support from others when it comes to self improvement? Well, I said that you know, we're. Oh, I think we're pretty open minded. I mean some people could consider us very closed-minded or set in our ways, but I think we're very open-minded so we can really entertain others um, ideas and then quickly ascertain right away. If this is something I can, I'm like, that's kind of smart, man. Like I'm going to, I'm going to steal that. I'm going to integrate it into my life and, and go forward. So um, I don't think we have a problem with hearing a lot of ideas and then instantly not, like throwing things away. Like kind of how you talked about, um, with photology and, and I, I kind of feel that way about socionics, even though I didn't throw it away, I just didn't apply it as heavily as, as other things. Um, we have to realize other people are more, are, are successful that are our type. And we have to go like, well, what are they doing? And can I use some of it? And a lot of it's, I've just adopted or integrated extroverted tendencies, the ability to break into a group of people and start a conversation. Like you have to learn these techniques to be it's 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 stressful but once you learn how to fake it or be really good at it um that's helped me in the in the business world a lot okay um can you talk a little bit about that how do you develop more extroverted traits and stuff like that because i've been talking about this thing the importance of being an ambivert for example over and over okay. again right um it's back to like um it's sort of like here's what's successful and i say sales but I, I don't get caught up in like the car salesman I, I read sales books because they teach you how to with icebreakers or they teach you like a cadence of questioning when you're with somebody to just get build rapport quickly and i learned that really good extroverts always have something to say to people they don't know they always think of something They'll, as simple as like oh those are really cool shoes and it's like so inane, but people are like, oh, thank you. I got him. And you're like, oh, you got him at TJ Maxx. Oh, I love shop shopping there. And you can use that. Just anything could be said to anyone if it's the right way. And extroverts are amazing at that. And you're just like, you, ENFP, just became friends with somebody in five minutes that has taken me a year to develop the same friendship with. And what did they do? They just complimented them. They, they started talking. They, whatever. It works. You know, I think we sometimes look down on it as like these gregarious people, but um, we should adopt it more. We should try to figure out our own version of that. All right, interesting. So, because you said something about uh, ENFP, it took you a year to make, took you a day to make the friend that I made in a year. I want to ask you this: What do you think makes a friendship? Is it time or circumstances? If I had to pick one, I'd say time. I think it's time. Interesting. I'd say circumstances. circumstance could just be like circumstances could just be like you, you're both, you know, what's that? Um, when you're both hostages or whatever, what's that called? Stockholm syndrome. You're just like in the same spot. You like suffer together, so you develop this really instant connection. But outside of that, you'll never talk again. 
Oh, interesting. For me, I think it's actually circumstances because like you could know a person oh. for a year. Huh. But because you two were put in a certain specific circumstances, it sort of revealed to you that the person's not really your friend. But with another person okay. who you've only known for a month, you were in a circumstance, they had your back, and you've only known this person for a month. But that person had your back, though. More than the people who've known you for years. Got it. So, like, more like you, you in combat together. For, or, yeah, Something for example. Like that. Or somebody's, like, lying about you and you're trying to, like... Uh, talk bad about your character but that person who's only known for, for a month actually stands up for you because he knows who you actually are and stuff like that where the other person who was your friend for a year or two years doesn't want to say anything because the person talking is a little popular you know and if they go against them then they'll mm. lose like get like yeah that's a great question I, I should ask people that so the question so the question is what what defines friendship time or circumstance no, or what, what reveals friendship or what proves what friendship you could say that yeah hmm is it how long you've known somebody or the circumstances you've been through with, with them? Yeah. It's funny because you could be like, oh, I've known him forever. And then when you reach out, it's like, yeah, but we haven't talked in that long. We don't really know what each other's life is like anymore. So time isn't, maybe time isn't that great. I'll have to reevaluate. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for getting me thinking there. Oh, it's all good, man. It's all good. All right. So next question. Could you describe a specific moment or experience that led you to a significant breakthrough in your personal growth journey? Oh, yeah. When I gave up watching sports, I write about this in my book. I preach it all the time. Sports are actually, like, watching sports is essentially meaningless. But I used to spend so much time watching sports, the highlights, the pregame, the Twitter feeds. I would just wrap my mind it would affect my day. My wife would come home on Sundays and she'd look around the corner and be like, did they win? <laughs> Cause if they didn't, the day was ruined. And my mind, and then I, when I stopped doing it, I realized that all this time and I had to make time. So my goal, I wanted to read a hundred books in 2020. It's like, well, I can't read a hundred books if I don't give up something. So I gave up sports and I got up early it changed my life. And then like very quickly after I gave up watching sports, I would look at other people and go, what are you guys talking about sports for? Like these guys don't care about you. These players don't care about if you die tomorrow, they're not coming to your funeral. And they're, it's just the fantasy sports people and talk sports talk radio is like the lowest level of communication. And it's just sad to me. Um, so that was one thing. I stopped, I stopped reading uh, Twitter, um, and it just freed up so much space to do my own thing. That's when I wrote my book, had my son. So there's just like a lot of things I had to give up, and that was great. Nice. All right. So it was it was a distraction. It was taking time. wasn't adding anything to you. Zero. It was just pulling. Yeah. Did you... Like you said, we like to conserve energy in our brain. Yeah. yeah. Introverts, yeah. Yeah. So let me ask, did you at least use it as a mechanism to establish rapport with people or to like, you know, have friendships and stuff like that? So that's even, that's a great, I'm glad you said that because what I had noticed was how many friendships were built around what team I liked. But once I, once I stopped watching, it was like, well, what's, what's the point of hanging out? So that was revealing too. But um, you said that, it, what was the question again? So did, did you at least use it as a mechanism to like... <laughs> have shared yes. experience with those people like okay let's let's go out to a restaurant and watch the game then we can yeah, just chill I with friends still, and stuff like that i'll still go to i'll still go to a pro sports game i'll still you know if the friends are over and they watch college football because i live in the south so there's a lot of uh, college football fans here and um they i'll say oh, how's uh, how's georgia doing i don't know or care but like it just builds a little bit of like, oh, so what's their record this year? Like those are, I think those are extroverted things that we could learn to to do just to be nice and build rapport. And if, if people end up ranting about, you know, how the refs screwed them over last game, you have to listen for a little bit, but then you have to develop eg exiting techniques when people start talking to you. That's the other part of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. All right. Um, Wait, have you ever been into video games? Oh yeah, I was, I was like top two hundred in Halo Three, back in the day, 
Um, but that was the only game I, I, I obsessively played Halo 3. Um, but that was about it. I played, you know, N64, you know, uh, Super Smash back in the day. I, I mean, I'm 33, so, I mean, it's I don't play video games anymore. Right, okay, cool, cool, cool. But what, what's, what, what, what's that question for? I mean, what's that about? Well, I was just thinking, because, like, what replacement do you have instead of sports if you're trying to connect with people? How about video games? I play a ton of online chess. All right. All right. Okay. Way too much. Like, too much so that I'm, like, so mad at myself that I'm, like, obsessing over stupid chess. Bro, it's, like, I, so... I, I know it's I know it's a INTJ thing to do, but I personally don't even care about chess. Like, I, I no, don't... I'm, like, it's a waste there. of time. Like, what am I even doing? It is. <laughs> oh, my God. It is. But I... I, I I like it, and it's it's to me. I can justify the intellectual need to 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 be into it. So yeah, you're right. It probably is a waste of time. All right, all right. So, okay, quick question. INTJs often have high standards for themselves. How do you avoid perfectionism and maintain a healthy balance between striving for excellence and self acceptance? I will tell you that I don't care about i have high standards but i don't care about being perfectionism i write emails i text stuff that i don't even look at it i do voice to text i am not someone that cares about like everything being you know uh wrapped up in a bow i mean my first book if people have read my first book like it was formatted like crap the pictures were terrible i just like i i just wanted to get it out there so i think this like analysis paralysis that INTJs might have. I think I just started putting a mediocre stuff out there to start the momentum going and then fixed it as I started to get, like started to do more content, do more writing stuff like that. Um, but I do look, I do look down on some people for not having high standards for themselves in terms of like, I don't know, their weight or what they eat or what they you know what they watch like i i i do have a critical view towards other people um but like i said i do have that negative self-talk i do always think i could be doing better mostly in a physical like physical way like working out um so hold on so how do i to avoid perfection so let me repeat the question okay how do you start doing something all right. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right. So you just get up there, start. Don't think too much about it, and just get into it. Yeah, which kind of sounds like an extroverted response. Well, that is, but the activity itself don't is kind of is extrovert. Yeah. So it's like stop using ni. Learn to put yourself out there with se. Don't procrastinate. Basically, interesting. Yeah. That is a big struggle for se uh, inferior or suggestive. It feels so good though. Once you do it, when you're like, I should do this more often. I should just start. Yeah, and yeah. And go yeah. back, and then. No, no, what do def- you think? No, 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 it's true. I mean, even when I'm like think, referencing back to the model that I use, which is socionics, um, mm-hmm. the inferior function we call it suggestive. Although it's weak, but it's extremely valued. Like you want to be good at this, but you also know that you suck at it, so you sort of look for other people to help you in, or look for something okay. outside to support you in and push you forward now that can be another person or it can be a piece of music but it's something like you're looking for something external to get you into action because you have a hard time doing that for yourself that's beautiful okay so this explains why i sign up for workout classes because it makes you go or you get charged yeah and once you go you're glad you went yeah and I'm see like, that's so se that's people- se suggestive right there that's exactly yes it. Okay, brilliant. That's smart because I would say stereotypically ESTP tends to be like the best weightlifters or like like the biggest dudes. They can do that. They can set a schedule themselves. They can motivate themselves to go. They don't. They think classes are for for pussies. Yeah. And yeah. like you don't need that stuff. So, but me, I'm like, if I have that structure or I have something that motivates me, if especially SE activity, I'm all about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because see, you're doing, you're engaging in that. And you're allowing yourself to be punished by the outside world if you don't do oh, I it. Love it. So that just pushes you to pain. go further. Yeah. Yeah. The pain is great. Well, embracing yeah. is like the best thing I ever did. Right. 
Okay, so in what ways has understanding your cognitive functions, such as dominant introverted intuition and auxiliary extroverted thinking, influenced your approach to self development? I would say very significantly. Um, I have learned that any, with any task that I set for myself, TE will just take care of it. Like, it will just formulate the way to do it. It may not be correct right away, but it will eventually figure out this is the, the right way to do it. But now that I know that that's sitting there, I can engage with something and be like, I'll figure it out. But when I say I'll figure it out, I'm like, it will figure it out because yeah. I've developed it over time. Um, and then with with NI, this is why like I sometimes struggle with, am I an INTJ? Am I something different? Is my NI weak? Because I don't have that crystal clear vision that all these INTJs talk about where they see the goal 20 years and like how to get there. It's always a fuzzy goal. It's not very clear. And I just know like, for example, working out has benefits or like, doing this amount of putting this amount of study into something will have a benefit. I just don't know what, but I can feel that it will huh. eating better has an end goal of your gut feels better. Your brain feels better. Your, all these things. But I, I'm, I don't see this like goal end goal. Interesting. I personally see the end goal very clear. My what if, or where things might get murky is how to get there sometimes. Okay. sometimes like the how to get there but i think it changes from person to person because i've also met like i heard this one lady in, in ben vesterland's video she was talking about how it's never clear for her her and i or what she sees and stuff like that and she can't really communicate mm. it so it's like interesting so like there's like variation some people will see it clear all the way through some half half some not at all and stuff like that so let me ask you this when i was working with Juan Sandoval of Voltology or Cognitive Type, he tied me ENFP. And he said that my NI vision was actually NE. How like how something could 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 happen in the external world was was me describing NI, but I was also describing NE. The whole shower thoughts idea. I have this idea, I know how to do it. He goes, well, that's just N E T E playing out as an ENFP, not N I T E. And I was like, you got a point there. I don't know how to refute this. So, okay. <laughs> well, well, I'll say this. That guy typed also a Sora Psych as an ESFP. Right? Same, same quadra. Which is complete bullshit. I mean, come on. Asura, like, a Sora Psych, Chris G, all right? Being yeah, know, an SE base. Right. No, I'm just saying yeah. this for the video for people who also watch, okay? Yeah. Being SE base is high comedy. It's absolutely hilarious, bro. Like this is this is this is a good laugh to have, all right? To say that Chris is SE base. To say that you are NE base is also like which is any DOM is, is a bit weird. All right, so what okay, let's talk it's about It's not NE. wrong though. You're not saying it's wrong, you're saying it's weird. No, for it's, Chris you said it's bull bullshit, but for me you say eh, it's weird. Well, it's weird then it's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's okay. wrong in a weird way. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay so let's talk about NE. What as I understand it, NE is possibilities, potential mm -hmm. in the external world. What can happen? It's not about vision. It's about just permutations, different combinations. They want to keep the doors open. You know, they want to explore. Mm -hmm. They like the idea of, I, I call them, um, how, what is it called? Intellectual explorers or cognitive explorers, right? NI is all about what is most likely going to happen. Mm -hmm. And it's aware of changing SE concrete reality to change the NI endpoint because NI and SE are connected. Right. Now, I lies, we, we struggle with the SE part, which is doing the actual changing of the concrete reality to manifest the NI vision part. That's basically how I understand it. Okay. So, and I, and I, I think I agree with you. So it's like, if you say, I want to, I'm trying to think of something that's like concrete, like, I want to grow my business threefold in a year. Or n that seems like a, a, and then how would I do it? How would I do it as TE, but like, I'm going to grow my business. Is that an NE, like NE or neither. Like NI? 
It's neither. You want to what grow. You want to grow your business is is a goal that you're setting. Okay, it's a goal. Right. Okay. It's not. It's not. How it's going to happen? It's not. How a it's going to happen is what? Okay. The how. The how is thinking. How? That's just thinking. That's it. It's T E T I. Yeah. It could either. It could be T E or T I. It could be either one of those thinking. The, okay. All right. But you have a goal you want to set. For whatever reason why you set that goal, that's up to your own subjective motivations, which could be influenced by your environment or internally influenced. Who cares? Who knows? Okay. But the point is, is that once you start figuring out how to do something, you're calculating, you're solving, right. you're thinking. So why do t why would it seems like TE would be much stronger than TI in terms of calculating is it could be similar but action is where the ntps kind of fall apart right because is that the se se in this mm, i don't know i don't i don't believe it's se because se okay. from where I, from socionics that what the model i'm using is all about force yeah. it's how much oomph you have yeah. te te is all about practicality work efficiency productivity it's all about applied logic where the t the reason why the ti types don't apply stuff is because they're too busy creating an internal model, a framework, making sure that everything is consistent and checking it themselves as opposed to verifying it in the outer world. Right. Okay. That's, that's a good, okay. That's a good distinction there. Right. So, uh, it, which is so sad for the world because like you have these great logicians or that, that tend to just be like so smart, but like they're, they're, putting it into something that's we could all use is rare true and that's why you need te types the te types will put it to use the ti types will make everything more consistent and stuff like that right so one of your shorts you did was about like you know it had me up there and it was talking about misunderstanding te types everyone thinks they're jeff bezos or everyone thinks they're elon or everyone thinks they're steve jobs or something like that which um, one was that remember, which one was it was that a about? short it yeah, was yeah. a short it was about entjs and it was me in that chair and i was it was about um people always think te types are just ceos like they don't realize it's every like just me and you mm. sitting there yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. um i kind of wanted to explore that because i've always you know i think i did a whole thing about te in corporate america and all that stuff right. but what what is your opinion on it? is it is it overvalued all right so look in US, in the U.S. or in countries yeah. with, let's just let's, let's say first world countries, and that's a little bit of a controversial term, but the point is advanced countries. The some countries will reward TE, but some other countries don't value TE the culturally speaking the way the U.S. does. Some other countries sure. value because again, I've lived in five different countries in my life, and I'm only 25. Wow. Right? Wow, that's awesome. And I had to move and shit like that. It was it was more like unstable, like home financial stuff so it wasn't really okay. awesome but whatever okay, oh, okay. sorry my bad <laughs> point is it, it was that but i learned a lot so some countries value se a little bit more some countries fe a little bit more right and some people don't give a shit about te right because again te at the end of the day is just how productivity efficiency like a conveyor belt how fast you can produce <laughs> items and stuff like yeah. that right so yeah. people don't give a shit about that stuff like who yeah. cares so right. In the U.S., TE is valued, and especially especially in the corporate world. In 100%. that in that bubble, I would say. So, can you tell me what exactly is your question? What what, what uh, so I can? Answer. Oh, I, I I was just um I think you answered it, it was like it, it's overvalued. Or we we put too much emphasis on the meaning of a person or the value of a person in corporate America because we're a hyper corporate state in America. So we 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 exalt these people like i just read a biography on jack welch one of the most insane entjs that's ever lived and it's like well he's the you know the greatest ceo that ever lived to a lot of people right but also he really wrecked a lot of stuff and we're still actually seeing the repercussions of that today so right so just so, a tangent i wanted to explain no 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 that, that's i'm glad i'm really glad you brought this up because we also have to consider the evolution of a, of, of a company startup companies are going to value any they're going to value oh, any yeah. like health startup, right. especially startup tech companies, especially 
yeah. all about that any but then as you grow and you mature things need to get more regulated that's where ti comes because ti is all about order and structure again from socioeconomic standpoint te is not about mm -hmm. order and structure te is about getting shit done but ti is all okay. about order and structure and you see a lot of ti in in like government agencies right or in any company that you work that's at a maturity level or big organizations you see that shit a lot ti all about order this is the hierarchy okay. this is the way don't step out of line huh okay because from is a okay. yeah no, no i'm coming from a socionics perspective and in socionics okay. ti is all about order structure you don't step out of line okay okay then the and then again the actual task so so again we, we have to look at it have a multi-dimensional view of organizations and not just look at different departments but also look at what stage of development are they in right right because that's how i'm looking right. at it as well and my main issue is with people in the mbti camp is that they have confused te for se so a lot of the times they'll paint entjs as these big boss they just want to be mr dominant they want to like compete against like be a conqueror and that's not te dom that's se dom those are your ESCPs, ESFPs. They're all about dominating for the sake of dominating. That's a that's a very good. That's a. I don't even know if I. I mean, I don't even have a re rebuttal to that. I think it's interesting, and you could probably name a, a lot of people that have that mindset. Like a but Genghis Khan is not a T dom. Who is it? A Genghis Khan, or yeah. a, a a a Julius Caesar. Or a Napoleon. I don't think those are TE doms. They're all SC doms. Oh, that hurts me real. That cuts me really deep. Man, people so, yeah. people don't want to hear that. That's, they want to say they want to say TE is like you know the dom. Gosh, he, Napoleon obviously have a yeah. I see. From me. He's my he's like my favorite historical figure ever. I mean, I guess I'd be okay if he wasn't uh, T uh, ENTJ. Because it's again, it's all about force. SC is all about force in the concrete and it's all about space all about that oomph you know 